from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Can teaching with primary sources engage young learners? Skeptics might argue historical materials are boring. There's too much text. The vocabulary is too difficult. Students won't understand the history. However, current research, teacher testimonials, and personal experience indicate that primary sources can bring history alive for younger students. Nearly all state standards acknowledge the importance of teaching with primary sources. Exposure to these raw materials can spark students' imaginations and support inquiry, historical thinking, and constructive learning. If you've ever wondered how early elementary students develop historical thinking skills, take a look at this lesson from Teresa St. Angelo with a group of kindergarten historians. Teresa teaches kindergarten at the John I. Dawes Early Learning Center in Manalapan, New Jersey, and is the 2016-17 Library of Congress teacher in residence. Using primary sources in my classroom is just so important that I want to get students and parents excited and involved from the very beginning of the school year. I send home a newsletter and then explain to parents at back to school night how their children will become kindergarten historians through analyzing primary sources. I outline a schedule of lessons and show how parents can get involved throughout the whole year. For the students, the year begins with a short lesson on the Library of Congress and what it has for all learners. I follow this with an activity on the important job of a historian, and finally, we examine what a primary source is and students do an analysis together. Once the groundwork is complete, we jump into actually using primary sources. We establish the analysis as a routine so they can't wait for the new primary source to analyze. Here's an example of a primary source lesson I did in February when we were discussing Valentine cards in the post office. Prior to this unit, we had spent time as a class identifying key people in their communities, their jobs and job descriptions, and identified locations of those jobs. Planning lessons that are relevant and related to students' lives allows them to process on a deeper level and adds to their engagement. All students gathered on the carpet. The classroom lights were turned off and the boys and girls began wondering what they were going to watch. They saw a short film from 1903 titled Collecting Mail. Some students couldn't contain themselves and called out what they saw or a connection they made with the film. One girl called out, my dad watches black and white movies all the time. The students were so interested that when I asked them to turn and talk to a buddy, they started talking immediately. When the film was over, the students did a turn and talk about what they noticed or what happened. I then had the students work independently to analyze a photograph. The guiding question for them was, where do you think the men are working? I told them to circle the evidence that helped them guess where the men were working. One student thought they were in a kitchen. I asked the student to think about things we see in a kitchen and find evidence of them in the image. When he couldn't find any, he reconsidered his conclusion. Responding to observations this way allows the students to develop the skills of citing evidence to support ideas and evaluate information. In small group discussions, the boys and girls analyzed a set of photographs. They shared their thoughts and ideas around a set of early 1900s photographs of a horse-drawn mail wagon at a railway station, unsorted mail at a post office, and a girl handing a letter to a mailman titled, A Letter to Papa. They had to describe similarities and differences between mail delivery then and what they know about mail delivery today based on their experiences and background knowledge. This was followed with the boys and girls writing a letter to their family that was mailed home. A recap of the lesson was sent home to parents. It included a copy of the railway mail train image, along with an assignment, which asked parents to discuss the image with their child. I asked parents to submit a statement about what they learned from their child. Using primary sources allows my kindergarten students to develop their critical thinking, questioning, and analysis skills. 
I see the students carry those skills over into other academic areas such as literacy and science. It takes their natural curiosity and allows them to discover and grow as young learners. Such introductory activities help teachers and younger students become more comfortable with connecting to and analyzing primary sources. But this is only the beginning. The possibilities are endless for helping students in elementary grades delve more deeply into learning with primary sources. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.